Hey guys, it's Marty with DPC Technology. We're here today in the office, actually being renovated right now. So if you hear any crazy background noise, don't worry, everything's okay. But we are going through my bag and, and what I typically carry when I go on site. Most of the stuff in here is designed uh, or at least you know planned for a cable run. So anything from terminating cables and uh, you know cutting holes and, and you know, all that kind of good stuff. There are a couple of other items in here that are just kind of random use. Uh, we'll, we'll come across those and we'll, we'll kind of explain what's going on there. You know, first and foremost, this tone generator slash cable tester little pouch that I have here always kind of sits on top uh, you know I may not need it every time but inside of it is just a you know cable tracer and a cable tester that's for obviously any existing cables that you're trying to tone out or if you did a big wiring job and you're trying to you know identify a particular cable uh, and then test it but I'll go ahead and set this aside um, almost everything else in here is, is truly designed to cut holes in walls, participate in fishing and terminating lines up and down that wall. On this side over here, I just have a couple of different random screwdrivers, uh, typically small ones made for volume controls or little things like that. Uh, some flat, some Phillips, and of course, by the end of the day, there's nothing but flatheads in here. In this middle pouch, I just have these scissor-like cutters. I actually just started trying these out. I typically use like a set of dike pliers or a, you know something like this, although these are just really small and uh, something that is typically used on like a sound uh, volume control or, or something like that. Um, I then have just two strippers, uh, both wire strippers that are you know made for uh, data cabling. Obviously, snip onto the cable and one quick spin and all you gotta do is pop the uh, sheath off and you're, you're ready to terminate. I'll go ahead and spin around the other side real quick. Uh, on this side, actually just a couple of little random things. I have a Leatherman with me. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll throw this on when I'm on a big project just for giggles, but I just kind of keep it with me because it's a easy catch-all tool. Here's just a small, a little terminating tool that uh, I keep in case just to have an extra. Uh, I actually have a full-size one right here. This one actually has the ability to swap out uh, tips, particularly for uh, the use with a 66 block. Uh, which we don't use all that much anymore, but is something that we still use. As I said, I've got uh, Leatherman, this little small uh, punch down tool, and then just a basic uh, box cutter. Uh, I typically keep a knife on my person, um, just on job sites, just because, but obviously something that's a little more uh, abusive to the knife, I will just use a box cutter so I, uh, not upset about beating up my blade. On the side here, I've just got a couple of pencils and just random, just blank wall plates that I've stuffed in the side, uh, just in case we end up, you know, not needing to actually uh, use a conduit that has been purposed for us, or if I need to cover a wall, a hole in a, a wall for whatever reason. That's pretty much it in that pocket. Uh, everything else yeah, lies in the middle, and so I kind of go through here. And obviously, these are just mail ends for a data cable. If we were to make a mail end, you know. Um, typically everything's terminated into a keystone, but you will find uh, that a you know, security camera or a wireless access point or something like that may be beneficial. And of course, if you're just making patch cables, it uh, doesn't hurt to have them. Um, random grommet, uh, in case you're in a pinch and you just need to cut a hole through a desk countertop, it's just a standard two inch uh, grommet. You have kind of a stash here of other wall plates and even wall plates I've pulled off of jobs for whatever reason. And you know, uh, maybe we were going from a two or four port to something larger, but uh, just a couple of random wall plates with a couple of keystones. And when it comes to fishing wire, everyone knows electrical tape. Just can't do much without electrical tape. Uh, tape measure. This is just a little cheat cable that I've made if I ever needed it. Uh, every once in a while when we're using a tone generator or something like that, you end up not having the right ends. And this was just made you know, coincidental one day and I've kept it around with me. Uh, more keystones. Um, this is a low voltage old work box. Obviously it doesn't look much like a box, but uh, it's because it's old. Lo it's low voltage and so it doesn't need to have a uh, complete enclosure. This is just a couple of random uh, pieces of 3M. We actually use this to mount a couple of PCs, like micro PCs behind a TV once before, but again, random stuff like this kind of comes in handy every once in a while. Random putty knife for, not me obviously, but when someone else uh, mounts something and has to be moved and we need to patch that hole. I actually have a couple of just quarter 20 uh, bolts here. These actually were purchased because we uh, use a drywall anchors and we just happen to have a mount that needed a longer screw. But uh, one thing you'll find in a lot of installs is a need for a drywall anchor. Uh, and those quarter 20 bolts will come in handy because we typically use the, the quarter inch uh, sized anchors. Long drill bit. 
never know when you'll need a long drill bit. I just got uh, a small stash of wire here. This is used very little these days, to be honest with you, but uh, anytime I'm patching in a uh, 66 block and I need to splice in a line somewhere else or just make uh, a, a particular jack hot with a fax line, or, you know, something like that. On this side over here, I've got a, uh, a stash of uh, screwdrivers. These are just the full size. I do have one of these fancy smancy screwdrivers that allows you to put any size bit in here. Um, obviously get a little less torque on it, but a little more speed if you're just installing wall plates. Level, because I don't ever put a wall plate on without making sure it's level. It's kind of an OCD thing of mine. A couple different pair of vice grips. These are obviously used, not all that common when we're doing line runs, but typically uh, we're installing mounts or you know something like that. These might be necessary for whatever reason. Uh, have a couple of pliers slash cutters here. These are just general purpose pliers. Uh, like I said, for whatever it may, may be necessary, I have them. Um, these are really just a big set of cutters. It's really more uh, made for ele electrical stuff. You can cut anything with it uh, that's smaller than that, but they're just uh, you know beefy and rigid and, and not as easy to work with. So this is typically made for uh, you know, home wire, electrical wiring, or something like that. I actually did a solar project, and that's why I picked these up. Drywall saw. Um, this guy is your friend when it comes to, you know, popping a hole in a wall. Install one of these old work boxes. You're going to use one of these to cut that hole nine times out of 10. Uh, standard Cat5 crimpers. Obviously, it has a stripper tool in here, so you don't necessarily use one of these strippers. However, if I was doing a patch panel or something like that, I would never use these guys because they're just highly inefficient. At least as far as I'm concerned, I'd use a pair of strippers and a uh, solid punch down tool. But if you're running, uh, running a single line and you just needed one tool to kind of do everything, aside from actually keystoning, um, you could use these to strip, cut, uh, you know, and, and make mail ins. Here's just a, you know, regular set of wire strippers, kind of more uh, used for our uh, sound cabling installs. Um, when you're trying to terminate volume controls or speakers and things like that. Here's a coaxial stripper. We don't use a coaxial that much anymore, um, but every once in a while we'll still have a need for it. Pop this guy in here, spin it, and strip down your cable. So that pretty much does it for everything inside of the bag. Um, I actually have gone through a couple of different types of bags. Uh, some of the longer kind of more rectangular ones, big circular ones that you see electricians have. Uh, I actually like this bag most because it forces me to be somewhat minimalist. Typically, if I'm going on a job site to do a, a, a full install and it's not just wiring, I need a little bit of everything. I've got a drill case and then I've got a separate bag with all my drill uh, accessories. And this allows me to keep all of my basic networking tools um, and you know all the things that I need without carrying too much because the last thing I want to do is walk into an office with 10 different bags or you know just tons and tons of stuff in my hands. So this thing I feel is pretty practical. Uh, just to recap, uh, you know, going through all of these tools, they all have a purpose and as soon as I don't have one of these in here, I you know find myself you know, wondering where the heck that one tool is. Uh, but there are definitely some favorites in here. You know, it's something that I will use every single time I do any kind of wiring project is gonna be one of these little strippers, like this exact one. I mean, there's even variations of this that does not have the slot cut in it. And I've actually purchased it and cut that slot just because I just like this guy so much. I've met people who like this stripper or some variation of that. Um, or as I mentioned earlier, you could actually just use a set of male termination crimpers, but it's just not efficient. And so if I'm wiring a patch panel and I have 100 to 150 wires I'm going to wire, there is definitely a uh, method to the madness in that. And so uh, on top of just the way I do everything, obviously I strip everything a particular length, not too much, not too little, so that I'm not doing any more uh, or less work than I need to. Um, but these little crimpers are just awesome. In conjunction with that, obviously, as I mentioned before, is just this keystone, a punch down tool rather, obviously made for keystones or for uh, punch downs. I've had a couple different ones. There's actually one uh, that is probably floating around somewhere in my vehicle that has a couple of little pull-out tools on the side. Um, I don't really use it as much anymore. It was more used when I was using 66 blocks all the time and I had to snag a little wire. It would come in handy every once in a while, uh, but I just don't find myself using it as much. But as I said, really just between this stripper and this punch down tool, these are probably my favorite out of, out of everything here, just because of how much I use them and how much, if I don't have this, like if I just had this guy and God forbid, uh, something like that, or even as something as nice as, as this, the amount of, it would probably take me 25% more time to do a patch panel, maybe, maybe more, which, you know, if you're doing 100 to 150 cables, you're probably talking about four or five hours. So it's a long day um, and you definitely want to have the right tools for this stuff. All right, guys, like I said, that is everything in my bag. Uh, we will put links for as many of these tools as we can. Uh, so you guys can pick them up yourself if you're interested. 
Uh, feel free to leave something in the comments of if you have any questions or if you have input on you know any of these tools that you use or if you find something better. I'm always up to hear a uh, more efficient or better use of a, of a particular tool or something that you know may be better for us. Other than that, you know, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.